Welcome to the annual Florida Historical Society Awards presented as part of the Florida Historical Society 2021 Virtual Public History Forum. I'm Ben Brokmarkle, Executive Director of the Florida Historical Society, and I'm really looking forward to celebrating an amazing group of books, projects, and people today. Just because this awards presentation is virtual doesn't make it any less important or special. Just use your imagination and picture yourself in a banquet room in your favorite Florida city. You've just had a wonderful meal and maybe have a glass of wine to toast our wonderful award recipients. The first award is the Charlton Tabot Award for a general interest book on a Florida history topic. It's named for Charlton Tabot, who was a University of Miami history professor and author of the book, A History of Florida. The recipient of this year's Charlton Tabot Award is George Herchala for the book, The Extraordinary Life of Jane Wood Reno, Miami's trailblazing journalist. Jane Wood Reno was an amazing woman in her own right, but was also known as the mother of former Attorney General Janet Reno and grandmother of the author. Congratulations to George Herchala, recipient of this year's Charlton Tabot Award. Thank you, Ben. It's a profound honor to be receiving this award named after Dr. Tabot, one of the giants of Florida history. Uh, this book, uh, I started over 15 years ago and was a long time labor of love. I found just one of the most interesting stories of uh, character in Florida history I'd come across. I know I'm slightly biased. She is my grandmother. Uh, <laughs> I had known bits and pieces of her life um, throughout time. I had collected a uh, collection of her writings, uh, The Hell of Politics back in 1994, but which had piqued my interest into a lot more of her life because it, it, it gave a sense of some of her writings and some of her journalism, but only touched upon what a profoundly interesting character she was. And so for years, I wanted to do more and I began working more and more on a, a detailed biography of her life instead of her writings. And, uh, and just uh, just took me into a deep dive into Florida history of the entire 20th century. And one of the most interesting things to me as a historian is I've never experienced anything so much like time travel as being a historian. I feel like I lived during the Great Depression in Miami. I feel so many, you know, such a connection to so many intimate stories of Miami during the Depression. And other periods of Miami that I almost feel like, like I've lived it by now. Um, so it was one of the most fascinating things I've ever done working on this book and to receive an award for this book now from the Histori Florida Historical Society is a great honor to me. Congratulations, George Herchala. Next is the Rembert Patrick Award for a scholarly book on a Florida history topic. Rembert Patrick was a University of Florida history professor and author of the book, Florida Under Five Flags. The recipient of this year's Rembert Patrick Award is Mary E. Adkins for the book, Chesterfield Smith, America's Lawyer. Mary Adkins is a professor at the University of Florida College of Law and author of the book, Making Modern Florida, How the Spirit of Reform Shaped a New Constitution. She's being recognized this year, though, for Chesterfield Smith, America's Lawyer. The Rembert Patrick Award this year goes to Mary E. Adkins. Thank you, Ben, and thank you, society, and the, especially the judges who chose my book. Um, it's a great honor to be receiving an award named for a fellow UF historian and uh, another giant in the field. Chesterfield Smith's life was an inspiration and definitely worthy of study. Uh, he was born in the cow town of Arcadia uh, at the end of the First World War. He was rudderless. The girl he eventually married described him as a young man who did nothing but uh, shoot crap, play poker, and wouldn't settle down. But World War II changed that for him. He saw what the Nazis did and that gave him a rudder. And he came home ready to be on the path to reform the world he saw around him. He decided to do that through the law and he believed that lawyers could and should 
make the world a better place. Again, his life inspired me and I think his story needed telling in these times. I'm honored to be the one to do the telling. And I thank you again for giving his book a higher platform. Thanks. Congratulations, Mary Adkins. The Patrick D. Smith Award is for a book of fiction on a Florida history topic and is named for the beloved author of A Land Remembered. The recipient of Patrick D. Smith Award this year is Tim Robinson, who has received this award multiple times in this category. This year, Tim Robinson is being recognized for his book, A Tropical Frontier, The Outpost. It is an honor to be once again selected as the recipient of the Patrick D. Smith Award. First off, I would like to thank Dr. Broto Marco and his staff for putting all this together and under most unusual and trying circumstances. In addition to the society and, of course, the obviously insightful and talented judges, I would like to thank my father, the late Dick Robinson, for instilling in me a great love for everything Florida, historical and otherwise. Also, my mother, Carolyn, who, along with my wife, is always the first to hear my stories. I say here because each week when I go down to visit, I read to her what I have written that week. She is always a receptive and appreciative audience, although the tossing of confetti can be a bit much. Regardless, I am grateful to have her in my life. She has always told me I could do it, whatever it might happen to be. As I said, my lovely wife, Connie, is my first and foremost reader. Indeed, she is the first line of defense on behalf of all my readers. I cannot tell you how many times she has rescued them and my editor from passages that should have never been said in print. She is another in my life who has always told me I could, or even should. I am grateful beyond words. I also wish to thank Diane Peebles for allowing the use of her amazing painting, Ebb Tide, for the cover of The Outpost. Many artists attempt the cabbage palm, few capture it with such authenticity. I would also like to take the time to recognize my brother, Pat, who designs the covers for my books. I am fortunate to have him. I am certain there have been times when he has wanted to throw up his hands in the air and tell me to stick it where the sun don't shine, but he can't. My mom won't let him. One more reason to be thankful for good old mom. I should also mention Debbie Murray from the Historical Society of Palm Beach County. It was she who assisted me with my first book, The Reference Manual, Pioneers and Settlers of Southeast Florida, and one of the first to suggest that I venture into the world of fiction. Now, 18 novels later, it appears she was correct. I have found my calling. Finally, I want to express my gratitude to June Saunders, the best editor a guy could ask for. But she is more than just an editor. She is a friend and mentor, having taught me countless invaluable lessons over the years. It is her talents that make me appear smarter than I really am. There are so many others, including my many readers and fans, now numbering well over 12. To all of you, I would like to say thank you. Once again, I am grateful to the Society for making this possible. It is a true honor to have my name associated with that of Patrick D. Smith. Thank you and tally-ho. Congratulations again, Tim Robinson. The Harry T. and Harriet V. Moore Book Award is for a book relating to Florida's ethnic groups or dealing with a significant social issue from an historical perspective. It's named for the first martyrs of the contemporary civil rights movement, Harry T. and Harriet V. Moore. This year's recipient of the Moore Award is Ryosuke Kawai, author of the book, Yamato Colony, The Pioneers Who Brought Japan to Florida. The book was originally written in Japanese and published in Japanese, but was published last year in English. Congratulations to Ryosuke Kawai for Yamato Colony. I am very much honored to receive such a prestigious award. I'm grateful to the many people who cooperated with me in my coverage in the United States and Japan for receiving this award. Needless to say, it would not have been possible without the efforts of Mr. John Gregerson and Ms. Reiko Nishioka, who translated from Japanese to English. Looking back, I first came to Florida, 1986. I quit the newspaper company I worked for in Japan 
and wanted to see Grassroots America. So I joined the De Daytona Beach News Journal and went around. I chose Florida because I thought it would be fresher to live in a place that seems to have no connection with Japan. However, surprisingly, I learned about the fact that there used to be a Japanese colony here, which is hardly known in Japan, and started interviewing in two countries. The bilateral coverage took a long time and was finally published in Japan, 2016. This is a story of immigrants. Immigrants are an adventure with great will, but in the midst of change in times and society. They encounter events that cannot be helped by own will. In America, I think you all have various routes. Among the great adventures, there was, uh, there was also a small group of Japanese in Florida. The leader of the Yamato colony had dreamed a great dream, but it was dismantled unsuccessfully. However, there were a few people who stayed there after that. The last one was Joji Morikami, who donated the vast land he had acquired to the local government. Based on that, the Morikami Museum and Japanese Gardens in Delray Beach was created. Joji Morikami was a farmer who came to the United States from the pain over broken heart in Japan and was thinking of returning to Japan after success. For some reason, in the end, he never returned to Japan and was never married, and he died alone as an American. Life is all about things that don't go as a plan. That's why it is interesting. I gathered as many facts as possible and assembled a non-fiction story based on the testimony of the men and women who lived hard to fulfill their dreams against the wind. I would like to dedicate this book to you and your ancestors as well as too many who have dreamed and were adventurous across the ocean. Thank you. Congratulations again, Ryosuke Kawai. The Stetson Kennedy Award is for a book based on investigative research which casts light on historic Florida events in a manner that is supportive of human rights, traditional cultures, or the natural environment. It's named after Stetson Kennedy, who in the late 1930s and early 1940s traveled throughout the state of Florida, collecting oral histories of all of the diverse groups of people who were living here at the time. It resulted in his 1942 book, Palmetto Country, which is published by the Florida Historical Society Press. The recipient of this year's Stetson Kennedy Award is Rick Kilby for the book, Florida's Healing Waters, Gilded Age Mineral Springs, Seaside Resorts, and Health Spas. Rick Kilby is also author of the book, Finding the Fountain of Youth, Ponce de Leon, and Florida's Magical Waters. But this year, Rick is receiving the Stetson Kennedy Award for Florida's Healing Waters. Thank you, Ben, and, and thanks to the Florida Historical Society for this incredible honor. I am almost speechless because of the amazing work that Stetson Kennedy did in his time here in Florida. And I also have a great deal of respect for the work of the society. You guys do such an you know, outstanding job of creating awareness of our rich past in the state. Ben Brokemarkle constantly creates interesting programming in seemingly every form of media imaginable. And Ben Diabasi was a great help when I was researching my book. The archives and Coco that you guys have are an incredible underutilized resource and I wish more people knew about them. Gainesville's Matheson History Museum was also instrumental. Their extensive collection of postcards, stereographs, and print ephemera are an incredible resource as well. Thanks to former director Peggy McDonald and Caitlin Hoff Mahoney for their assistance. 
A shout out to V.C. Gehrig in the archives of Clay County for her help researching the stories of Green Cove Springs and Magnolia Springs. Thanks also to the Orange County Regional History Center for their support of years, as well as archives in the, at the St. Petersburg Museum of History and the Pinellas County Heritage Village in Largo. In Florida, we are very fortunate to have two comprehensive resources, the Florida Memory Program at the State Library and Archives in Tallahassee, and the P.K. Young Library of Florida History at the University of Florida. Obviously, research is my true joy, and the images from these places hopefully help make the Gilded Age, Gilded Age come alive in my book. My only re regret is that I could not visit more archives and historical societies around the state because they have treasure troves of materials that have never been published before. I couldn't have written this book without the mentorship and skills of Joy Wallace Dickinson, to whom I am eternally grateful. This book evolved out of my first, Finding the Fountain of Youth, and that book came about because two talented friends, photographer John Moran and author photographer Gary Monroe, introduced me both to Meredith Babb at the University Press of Florida. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Meredith and to the University Press of Florida for taking a chance on a graphic designer with a big love of Florida history. In addition, thanks to John Moran for his incredible generosity in allowing me to use his remarkable photos. Of course, he always wants to run his photos as big two page spreads, but page limitations make that impossible. Of course, I couldn't have done this without the help of my family, friends and clients who made this book happen with their love, friendship and support. I'm grateful that you are in my life and acknowledged your contributions to my work. Finally, it's my belief that Florida's waters are both natural and historical treasures that should be preserved at all costs. The stories that Florida's watering places can tell can help us better understand the state we're in today. Preservation of the vestiges of the historical spa facilities, such as those along the Suwannee River, offer wonderful opportunities to understand a tradition that goes back to ancient cultures across the globe. There are only a handful of these places left and hopefully I've shed more light on why they are an important part of Florida's story. Thank you again for this honor. Congratulations, Rick Kilby. The Arthur W. Thompson Award is for the most outstanding article in the Florida Historical Quarterly. It's named for longtime professor of history at the University of Florida and longtime editor of the Florida Historical Quarterly, Arthur W. Thompson. The recipient of this year's award is Christine Ardelan, who won an award last year. She was last year's winner of the Harry T. and Harriet B. Moore Award for her book, The Public Health Nurses of Jim Crow, Florida. This year, though, Christine Ardelan is winning for her Florida Historical Quarterly article, The Hidden History of the Florida-Born Early Progressive Nurse Leader, Mary E. McDonald Carter. It was published in the Winter Spring 2020 issue of the Florida Historical Quarterly, and Christine Ardelan is this year's recipient of the Arthur W. Thompson Award. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this award in honor of the esteemed historian and longtime editor of the Florida Historical Quarterly, Arthur W. Thompson. I would especially also like to thank Connie Lester for her help to prepare this manuscript for publication. It was a great pleasure to research and recover the history of this woman, Mary MacDonald Carter. And now, thanks to the Florida Historical Quarterly, this woman's remarkable life and career will no longer be hidden in history. Thank you, the Florida Historical Quarterly. It was indeed actually remarkable that this woman, born in 1868, to the pioneering MacDonald family uh, in Central Florida, in, in that rugged wilderness time of Central Florida. And this, this woman grew up in, uh, in Florida and then found her way to New York to the cutting edge uh, Bellevue Hospital. And that of course opened her the door for her, not only for her nurse training, but for her career. Her career that took her back to Florida to Cuba, to the Philippines, back to New York, and indeed eventually home to Florida in time for the great influenza um, pandemic in 1918. 
So this woman was indeed an early progressive nurse leader and she stands out for her service to mankind. She deserves to be remembered as one of Florida's notable women. And again, thank you to the Florida Historical Quarterly for the opportunity to uh, present the life of this, um, this woman. Thank you for the award. I'm deeply honored. Thank you. Congratulations again, Christine Ardalan. The Hampton Dunn Digital Media Award is for digital media projects expanding knowledge of Florida history, including radio and television programs, podcasts, websites, and other electronic media. It's named for multimedia journalist Hampton Dunn, who preserved Florida history. The recipients this year are Robert Casanello, Lisa Mills, and Derek Laux for the documentary film, Filthy Dreamers. They're all from the University of Central Florida. And Robert Casanello is no stranger to this category. Lisa Mills and Robert Casanello have produced the committee, a documentary about the Johns Committee, and Marching Forward, about two high school bands in Orlando in the 1960s. And Robert Casanello has also produced numerous podcasts. This year, Robert Casanello, Lisa Mills, and Derek Laux all win for the documentary Filthy Dreamers, the Hampton Dunn Digital Media Award. Hi, I'm Robert Casanello. I'm Lisa Mills. We want to thank the Florida Historical Society for this award for our film, Filthy Dreamers. Filthy Dreamers is a film about the effort of activists to ban the teaching of evolution and other controversial subjects at Florida State College for Women in the 1920s. This really important episode in Florida history has never appeared in book form, and our film was an effort to get that story to a wider audience. So we want to thank the Florida Historical Society for that recognition. Robert and I would also like to thank Derek Lukes, the editor of this project. He was a student in our Burnett Honors College class that produced the film. The students were great. They helped us visualize a lot of the scenes in the film. They really worked hard on this project, which took about three years to complete. We'd also like to thank Dr. Connie Lester at UCF for her excellent narration on the project. Thank you so much. Congratulations again, Robert Casanello, Lisa Mills, and Derek Laux. The Golden Quill Award is for an outstanding series of articles on Florida history in print media. It goes to a multiple award winner in previous years, Elliot Kleinberg, for his Florida Time articles in the Palm Beach Post. Elliot Kleinberg officially retired this year from the Palm Beach Post, although he's still writing and his articles are still appearing. He's also author of books including Weird Florida 1 and 2 and Black Cloud, The Deadly Hurricane of 1928, all published by the Florida Historical Society Press. This year, Elliot Kleinberg is receiving the Golden Quill Award for his Florida Time articles. Thank you very much, Ben. Uh, in all my years at the Historical Society, which I believe is about 35, I always was one of the few members whose day job was journalist. Uh, persuading a news editor to let you write a story about history always was tough. Uh, after all, they want to put today's news in tomorrow's paper. But I always would explain to them that the average Floridian has been here for about 10 minutes, so anything we tell them is news. Uh, so in my three and a half decades at the Post, I was able to write dozens of history features. I wrote a weekly local history column for more than two decades and started a weekly Florida historical column called Florida Time that actually ran in some two dozen newspapers statewide. As Ben mentioned, I retired from the paper in December, but you folks know that I can't st sit still for more than about five minutes. Uh, so besides a blog that I've started about bad writing and how to fix it, I am for now uh, working on some Florida-based novels and I have a very long to-do list. Uh, this award coming at the end of my journalism career is, is really a special honor for which I'm very grateful and I cannot wait till we all can again gather in person. Thank you again. Congratulations again, Elliot Kleinberg. The David C. Broatmarkle Award is for creative expressions of Florida history other than books. It's named after my father, David C. Broatmarkle, who was a supporter of Florida history and culture. The recipient of this year's David C. Broatmarkle Award is Catherine Duffy and Pamela Schwartz, 
for the exhibit, Yesterday This Was Home, the Ocoee Massacre of 1920, which was at the Orange County Regional History Center. Catherine Duffy is curator at the Orange County Regional History Center, and Pamela Schwartz is the relatively new executive director at OCRHC. Congratulations to Catherine Duffy and Pamela Schwartz for this year's David C. Broatmarkle Award. Hello, my name is Pam Schwartz and I'm the Executive Director of the Orange County Regional History Center. I'm Catherine Duffy, I'm the Curator of Exhibitions for the History Center. We're here outside of the museum in Orlando to thank the Florida Historical Society for awarding our exhibition, Yesterday This Was Home, the Ocoee Massacre of 1920, with the 2021 David C. Broadmarkle Award. It's an honor to receive this award, named after such a revered individual, historian, and educator. Yesterday This Was Home would not have been possible without the hard work of our staff and volunteers, the members of our community focus group who served as a sounding board and support network for this exhibition, and the enduring support of our members and donors. We would also like to take this opportunity to thank the many institutions across the nation who loaned research materials, photographs, and artifacts to this exhibition, especially the descendants of those affected by the Ocoee Massacre. Really, this is their story to tell, and we thank them for lending their own voices, family histories, time, and photographs for this exhibition. Although few descendants remain in the Ocoee area, the legacy of the massacre can still be felt today. We, as a community, as a state, and as a nation, continue to fight for equality. We see that on the front pages of our newspapers, in our streets, and in conversations with our friends and family. We all have a role to play in creating a more equitable community and a key goal in creating Yesterday This Was Home was to empower visitors with knowledge and understanding. The Ocoee Massacre is an important piece of Florida history that must be shared. Although the exhibition concluded in April, our work is not done. With the passing of Florida House Bill 1213, the History Center will continue to develop curriculum for teachers, uncover more leads, and connect with more descendants to help preserve this important story. Thank you. Congratulations again, Catherine Duffy and Pamela Schwartz. The George Leland Speedy Harrell Award is for outstanding volunteer in a local historical society, library, museum, or other Florida history-related program or organization. It's named after Speedy Harrell, who was a longtime volunteer here at the Library of Florida History in Cocoa. In fact, we often joke that he used to, that he came with the building. Uh, the building is a 1939 WPA era post office, which now serves as our Library of Florida History. And Speedy worked here as a postman when it was a post office. And he was a, a great volunteer who uh, greeted people for many years as they walked through the door. This year's recipient of the George Leland Speedy Herald Award is Bill Arbogast, volunteer for the Florida Historical Society. Bill Arbogast spends part of the year in Colorado, but is very active with FHS. He helped establish our Vietnam archive. He helped us get on this building on the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, he's assisted with grants for the National Endowment for the Humanities to help uh, assess our library collections here. And, and like all of our volunteers, does what, whatever else is needed around here. So congratulations to Bill Arbogast, our Volunteer of the Year. I want to thank the Society and Dr. Brodemarkel for this award. It's gratifying to have my efforts recognized and appreciated. But I want to also note that I'm just one of many volunteers who show up every day at the History Society, working with the staff to get the day-to-day -day tasks done on a regular basis, and I'm delighted to be among them. And I'm hoping I can be able to do this for another couple of years. Let's hope so. Thank you. Congratulations again, Bill Arbogast. The Dorothy Dodd Outstanding Archivist Award is for exemplary service to the study and promotion of Florida history by an archivist in a public, private, or university library or other archival facility. It's named for Dorothy Dodd, former Florida State Librarian and dedicated Florida Historical Society supporter. This year's recipient of the Dorothy Dodd Outstanding Archivist Award is Wengxin Zhang at Rollins College Olin Library, where he is head of archives and special collections. He's also editor of books, including a trip to Florida for health and sport 
the lost 1855 novel of Cyrus Parker's Condit, but he helps many other people with their writing projects at Rollins College and outside researchers as well, which is why Wengshen Zhang is this year's recipient of the Dorothy Dodd Outstanding Archivist Award. Well, thank you so much, Ben. This is totally unexpected, but I'm very delighted and honored to receive this award. Uh, unlike most uh, people here, I'm a first generation Asian American immigrant and I fall in love with my adopted homeland when I moved to the Sunshine State in the 1990s. I remember when I first uh, uh, read the article by Professor Saki O'Sullivan and Jack, uh, Jack Lane on Zora Neale Hurston's connection with Rollins College, I began to take a very strong interest in Florida history. Uh, I did write a couple of essays on the Chinese experience in Florida. I'm very happy to see my article on Florida Spelling the China published in the Florida Historical Quarterly and thank Society for the Patrick Smith Award for the trip to Florida for health and sport a few years back. Uh, I'm a librarian and archive by training. I'm very fortunate to work in a college archive with a very long history in Florida. I'm so glad I can play a small role in preserving Florida's uh, rich uh, heritage and make those archive materials available to support your academic research related to state history. As you all know, Dorothy Dodd was the first state archivist and the second state librarian of Florida. She was a real giant in collecting and preserving Florida histories. I'm truly humbled and honored by this professional recognition named after her. Thanks again, Ben, and all the board members of the Florida Historical Society. Thank you. Congratulations again, Wengshen Zhang. The Caroline P. Rossiter Award for Outstanding Woman in Florida History is named after Carrie Rossiter, who in 1921, at the age of 23, just months after women received the right to vote in this country, became a very successful businesswoman. The Florida Historical Society manages the historic Rossiter House Museum and Gardens where she used to live. The recipient of the Caroline P. Rossiter Award for Outstanding Woman in Florida History is Meredith Morris Babb, former director and acquisitions editor for the University Press of Florida. And in 1999, Meredith Morris Babb had only been at the University Press of Florida for a couple of years when she facilitated the publication of my first book. And I'm just one of many, many authors whose life has been significantly impacted by Meredith and her great work at the University Press of Florida. So I am very happy to give the Caroline P. Rossiter Award for Outstanding Woman in Florida History a well-deserved award to Meredith Morris Babb. My thanks to the officers, members, and Ben for this very unexpected distinction. Um, please don't ask me to name my favorite book. I won't do it. Um, publishing in any discipline is a long-term and very concerted effort for many people. I was just one of many. So my thanks go to the staff and the editorial board at UPF for believing in the need and the power and the diversity of books on Florida history. To all of the authors, many of whom are here, uh, who trusted UPF with their research, their words, their reputations. I'm really proud of all of these books because they speak directly to the mission of a state-based university press. The former director, Ken Scott, gave me the marching orders when he called me into his office and showed me a brochure from the University of Alabama that said, Florida history from Alabama. And he simply said, I never want to see this again. <laughs> so I also want to thank the late Dr. Um, David Colburn. He was a stalwart supporter of both the press and of Florida history. But finally, I'm saving the most important thank yous for last. And that's to Drs. Gary Mormino and Ray Arsenault, who are the series editors of the Florida History and Culture series. And it's the bedrock of all of the books that we've published in Florida history. Their energy, enthusiasm, drive, and participation are the reason why these books are so well respected and received and used time and time again. Their dedication to these solid contributions and excellent research and good writing ensures that all of these books will be around for a very long time. So I thank you all once again. Congratulations again, Meredith Morris Babb. I'm sure there are many authors of Florida history books watching this that are singing your praises right now. 
The Michael V. Gannon Lifetime Achievement Award is named for the renowned Florida historian, author, and University of Florida professor of history, Michael V. Gannon. This year's recipient is lifelong Floridian, former U.S. Senator, and former governor of Florida, Bob Graham. Bob Graham is a lifelong Floridian. Born in Coral Gables in 1936, he attended Miami High School, the University of Florida, and Harvard Law School. Bob Graham served 12 years in the Florida legislature before becoming governor of the state in 1978. He left office with an 83% approval rating. Governor Graham was known for his work days where he would spend a day working in various jobs to better understand his constituents. Following eight years as governor, Bob Graham served three consecutive terms representing Florida in the United States Senate. Bob Graham's political career emphasized improving education in Florida, economic diversification, and extensive environmental protection. In more recent years, he has established the Bob Graham Center for Public Service on the University of Florida campus. It's my honor to present the Michael V. Gannon Lifetime Achievement Award to Senator Bob Graham, former governor of Florida, former U.S. Senator, and lifelong Floridian. Congratulations, Bob Graham. Thank you to the members of the Florida Historical Society for this recognition. I am honored to receive the Michael V. Gannon Lifetime Achievement Award. I am proud to have been called him also a friend. Over the last 84 years, I have seen our state experience massive change. The people of Florida gave me the privilege to serve in public office and shape our state's future. In 1936, Florida was a large peninsula, peninsula with a relatively small population. Today, we are one of the most diverse and fastest growing states in the nation. Throughout the decades of change, the Florida Historical Society has been dedicated to telling our story. I am grateful to you for your work to document and highlight Florida's history. Have a safe, healthy, and happy 2021. Congratulations again to Senator Bob Graham and all of our award recipients today. Thank you for joining us as well. I'm Ben Brokemarkle.